Hello guys. Um, this is the first video on this channel. I really hope, I hope you enjoy. So Apple, wait, <laughs> Apple versus Android. Both of them have their pros and cons. This is not a hate video or whatever, we're going which one. I just put the pros and cons by side by side and uh, whichever one wins, wins. All right, let's talk about Apple first. Apple is all about keeping their users' personal data safe. Apps can collect data on you. Apple stepped in and was like, you know what, no. Let's start off with Apple. Apple is all about security for all of their users. And what they did this year was amazing. They pretty much stepped in and made it to where third party app developers can no longer take info on you. And that's amazing. I, I feel like that's a really good step in the direction. You know, Apple's always been good with security. Like, they care about security, all right? Even if it's annoying sometimes. Like, it's pretty good. Um, unlike Android, Apple doesn't send your private data to third party apps. Android does and sends it to Google and whatever provider you have. See, this is Samsung. Also, it goes to Samsung. Pretty awful, right? Doesn't it feel like you're being backstabbed? <laughs> While Apple does collect basic information from you, it's more like screen time and stuff like that to, keep, to actually make the product better. And they deliver. They deliver on it. So I would not mind. And what's so great now is that Android and Apple, when you set up the phone, you can select if you want to do that. <clears throat> um, while there are a lot of phones out there, Apple really only releases one to three a year. Like, I feel like this year is the most Apple's released in a long time on everything. Not just phones, Macs, everything. Like, they just released their M1 MacBooks, which kicks butt. Like, it, woo! Right? But it's also more simple for people to go with an iPhone. Like, for your grandma, or your aunt, who, like, even blind people go with iPhones because of voiceover. You can't get nothing like that on an Android. Accessibility is really good on these. Um, yeah, it's more simple. Like, your aunt can use it. Your grandma can use it. It's great. And also, phone cases. Phone cases are so much better on iPhones because they only make one to three a year. It's so much simpler. Like, would you rather make phone cases for Android that makes over a thousand phones per year? It's a lot of time. Or Apple, which only they did release three. It's more simple to go with Apple. I mean, gosh, just look at that D-Brand skin. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> anyway, I mean, it's a lot easier to make phone cases for those phones. Also, another reason why Apple wins is the OS support, which you can get about four to five years, excuse me, of support without having to go to a new iPhone. As on Android, you're lucky to get two. You're lucky... You're lucky to even get one, all right? One. You just have to buy a new one. It's ridiculous. That's another point to Apple. Also, they made it. So their operating system is more optimized for their hardware. As on Android, it just depends on the manufacturer. They could put something in it. The OS might not recognize it properly. There you go. Got a buggy phone. Happens all the time. It's, it's pretty interesting how Apple is always like beating themselves at it like it's they set themselves personal goals and if they don't get to it they punish themselves Apple is great they always seem to accomplish themselves over and over and over and over again it's amazing also let's talk about layout the layout is so simple for people to understand Compared to Android, where sometimes there's widgets and other pages you gotta get used to. You know, everything is right beside each other, like iMessages, FaceTime, all of it. And most people are starting to like, like, similar to Spotlight Search, they have that on iPhone, where you just swipe left and you can search for any app. Pretty useful. Especially if you're like a person that has, like, you buy the really, like, big model version, which has, like, a bunch of storage, and you're like, oh, I'm going to download like every game on the app store and you're like, uh, I don't feel like scrolling through all these pages to try to find what I'm looking for. Then we just search it. Really useful. Um, it's pretty useful. Like even I can say the last iPhone I had was a five. Um, 
I'm just used to Android, that's why. And also, I'm broke, and iPhones can be a little expensive. But iPhones, I've also been going down in price every year, if you haven't noticed. Alright, there's a better video than what I'm doing now that explains it better. It's by Mr. Who's the Boss. I would totally recommend checking that out. Um, should you buy an iPhone? Yes. Go for it. Just don't blow away your money on the iPhone 12, because, like, like, see, the reason why Apple releases a phone every year is to keep your attention. It's to keep you not from looking at other platforms, right? Just like that. Oh, look, look at this Android. Apple releases a phone every year to keep those eyes. Um, it's just simple marketing. That's why there's nothing really different on the iPhone 12 besides cameras. Cameras on the iPhone is better than any Android. I can tell you that right now. But it still doesn't beat actual cameras. But maybe someday it will. You never know. Um, but I'd recommend upgrading every two to four models, like, or two every two to three years. Like, I, I recommend, like, easily just three models. So, like, say you get the iPhone 12. Don't get a, another iPhone until the iPhone 15 or 16 comes out. I don't know if that's what it would be called, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Just don't waste your money and, I mean, if it works, it works, right? Um, now, sure, phones do slow down after a while. That's why it's recommended to upgrade to every two or three years. Not really over, over than that. It gets, like, you should, you should really upgrade if you're going beyond that. Um, yeah, I would totally recommend an iPhone. Just depends on your budget. All right, let's go over Android. Android is great for looks and customization, but it lacks App Store purchases. That's something I noticed that Apple does really good, is secure App Store purchases and apps that aren't garbage. <laughs> like, I've never had an app on iOS that didn't work properly. As on Android, happens all the time. Also, it's just more secure. Like, yes, it's annoying you have to enter your Apple ID a dozen times. You can turn that off, but it's on by default because Apple cares about security. They want to make sure that you are the one actually purchasing this application, even if it's free. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty cool. Yes, Android can be really annoying, and I've noticed that on a lot of apps, like, it will just have random error messages on the bottom. And, like, they won't go away. Like, you'll have to either restart your phone or force stop the app and close it. And also, that's something I've also noticed on Android that sucks, is that when apps don't work, you just have to, like, mess with the settings and, like, go, like, watch. Like, sometimes on Instagram, you have to hold it down. You see where it says app info? Click app info and you have to, like, force stop it. You know, some people will think that's complicated. And that's why iPhone is so much simpler. For one, you get more storage options. Um, more storage options, options, that's kind of weird, and it's more simple for the daily user, but, now let's talk about OS support for Android, but did I already say this? Yeah, Jesus, alright, but some really, 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 really strong points for Android R is USB-C, as it's 20 times faster for data, and not just that. It can charge up to 20 devices uh, simultaneously. That's insane. It can go over 100 watts. That's insane for charging. Like, you would only have to charge it for, like, what, 10 minutes? Fully charged. That's insane. Um, <laughs> launchers. Launchers are a huge part in the Android world. Why? Maybe you don't like your launcher. Maybe it looks like garbage. Basic. Alright. You can customize it. Heck, you can even make your Android look like an iPhone. I don't know why you would, but you can, if you wanted to do so. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can fully customize an Android, as iOS is getting there, but it's still not fully customizable as I would like. Um, and that's really the only thing I can say about Android. I, haven't, I don't really know anything else to say. You can also, oh yeah, there's one more thing. You can actually change your default browser. Like you can, I don't think you can, you still cannot do that in iOS. So that's pretty cool. Okay, should you buy an Android? Yes. It depends on the price, fertility, and your personal preference. Like it just depends on what you're looking for and in your price range. 
there's only a few Android companies I really only recommend buying from, and that's Samsung, Blue, Oppo, and what was that other brand? OnePlus. Those are really the only ones I'd recommend that are the top-notch good Android phones. The other brands are an LG, but the other brands, like the cheap ones, they're just not great, you know, and that's going to ruin your experience because the hardware and their software is probably awful. Like, my uncle has a TCL. I feel bad because every time he tries to use the app, it pops up a white box, but, like, that the, the OS is so bad, like, the white box won't go away. You'll, click, you'll have to actually take the battery out of the phone or force a reboot. Pretty awful. Um, from the pros and cons, I feel like Apple wins this video, but I still really like Android, and I'm still going to be daily driving it. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, dislike, comment, subscribe, and yeah, subscribe to my main YouTube channel. Peace.